Hello everyone, I'm here to make a video and it's about a patent that uh, the US Navy, Secretary of Navy, just uh, essentially submitted under this inventor. And it's essentially an EM drive in application to a type of craft. Now, if you're not familiar with what the EM drive is, I'll just go over that really quick. Uh, the EM drive, or RF resonant cavity thruster, is a proposed type of propulsion wherein uh, you use a resonant cavity with electromagnetic pulses being generated inside of it. Um, it. It says to be generated from an intense source of microwave or other radio frequency energy and combined with a resonant cavity um, can be tuned to resonate at a precise frequency. Okay. And the idea is that it would produce a thrust. It would sort of game the system and produce a thrust. So in this paper, they talk about a craft using an inertial mass reduction device comprises of an inner resonant cavity wall and an outer resonant cavity and microwave emitters. So it's essentially an EM drive, but it's a little bit more advanced and we'll uh, kind of go over why it's more advanced. Uh, the electrically charged outer resonant cavity wall and the electrically charged insulated in inner resonant cavity wall form a resonant cavity. The microwave emitters create a high frequency electromagnetic waves throughout the resonant cavity causing the resonant cavity to vibrate in accelerated mode and create a polarized vacuum outside the resonant cavity wall. So basically what they're saying is that there's this resonant cavity, there's microwaves inside of it ricocheting around and what happens is that on the outside of that wall it creates a vacuum which causes there to be thrust generated and allows it to uh, produce sort of a uh, a force forward essentially. Uh, and then the idea also is that it reduces uh, the mass of the device. So it's like sort of like an anti-gravity device which is we did not think we would have that for a very long time so this is very interesting. Now you could say well maybe it's just a theory and it hasn't been um, created or not, but I, I don't know why the U.S. government, the Navy specifically, would be submitting a detailed patent, as detailed as this patent is, if they haven't at least tested it. I, I don't think that would make any sense. And if they tested it and found it not to work, you'd think they wouldn't go through the effort of, of uh, releasing a patent for it. So it, there must be something about it that's working. Here's where it gets kind of interesting. Um, so what it says here is there are four known fundamental forces with control which control matter and therefore control energy. The four known forces are the strong nuclear forces, weak nuclear forces, electromagnetic force, and gravitational force. Okay, so basically what they're saying is they're prefacing this. They're saying, look, there's four fundamental forces, and we found a way to control them. Okay, and, and you'll see that later here. It says, in this hierarchy of forces, the electromagnetic force is perfectly positioned to be able to manipulate the other three. So what they're saying is, they've found a way to use the electromagnetic force to manipulate the other three, which includes gravity, which is called, why this is called an inertial mass reduction device. So a anti-gravity device, essentially. Um, uh, and now I could get a lot of this stuff wrong because it's a lot of very technical type stuff and I'm not an expert by any means, so uh, bear that in mind. Okay, so as we kind of read through this, what we find is that uh, what they're essentially saying is that um, after, okay, a stationary electric charge gets electric static field and moving charge on both electric magnetic fields. Additionally, an accelerating charge, okay, anyways, a lot more details, a lot more details. Um, I'm trying to find, it's pretty deep in depth here, where they talk about what the results of this are, like what the outcome is. Okay, they say matter, energy, and space-time are all emergent constructs which arise out of the fundamental framework that is uh, the vacuum energy state. Everything that surrounds us, ourself include, can be described as a macroscopic collection of fluctuations, vibrations, and oscillations in quantum mechanical fields. Matter is confined energy bound within these fields frozen in a quantum of time. Therefore, under certain conditions, such as the coupling of hyperfrequency axial spin and hyperfrequency vibrations of electric charge systems, the rules and special effects of quantum field behavior also apply to macroscopic physical entities. So what they're saying is the microscopic phenomenon, when um, it is constructed in a way, or when it is utilized in a certain way, 
in the specific way that they're talking about here. Uh, let's go back to that. Um, when it is coupled, oh yeah, when it is coupled in the hyperfrequency axial spin with hyperfrequency vibration of electrical charge systems. So when this happens, when certain conditions happen, um, you can manipulate the macroscopic world is essentially what they're saying. They're saying it can be a, uh, the behavior also apply to macroscopic physical entities. So that's like, you know, this microphone, uh, the computer I'm using, me, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, we can keep going through this. A lot of this is just super in depth, and I'm not sure if that's really appropriate for the video. Um, I will have this link uh, in the comments so that you guys can take a look at it yourself. Um, I'm trying to find uh, this stuff that talks about what the implications of it is. Oh yeah, here we go. Polarization of the vacuum is analogous to manipulation modification of the local space tie topological lattice energy density. Wow, that's really deep. Um, as a result, extreme speeds can be achieved. So I'm not actually sure what they mean by a topological lattice energy density. But basically what they're saying is they're manipulating the energy density of a particular area to create an imbalance so that extreme speeds can be achieved because there's thrust. I mean, thrust is an imbalance, essentially. This is really fucking awesome. And I don't even have the ability to fully understand what's going on here because I don't know how to do all this math. Um, but it talks about the geometric shape factor and a bunch of other types of services and uh, a lot of math in terms of rotational rotations per minute, so 30,000 RPM spinning axially. Uh, I don't have the ability to calculate <laughs> any of this stuff. Definitely not in this video. Um, I may have to take a closer look later. Um, but it goes into extreme detail. Um, says the author discusses possibly using exotic uh, matter, negative mass, and negative energy density to bring about this effect. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Um, there was another thing I wanted to point out, though. I think it's in the claims section, though. And its idea... Okay, so they go over the summary again. And in this feature, the present invention is to provide a craft using inertial mass reduction device that can travel at extreme speeds. So basically what they want to do is they want to use this device to make a spaceship or a plane or a boat so light that the thrust that you can create using this or other thrust that you add on to it has a greater effect. Because you know if you have a heavy object, it takes a lot of force to move it. Um, this idea is you reduce the amount of force necessary to move it. And so you sort of, if you were to cut the weight of a plane in half, that plane can go much faster. Um, and so they're suggesting the idea that they could literally uh, reduce the mass and cause the plane to go extremely fast or the boat or whatever they want to use. Okay, so they talked about preferred embodiments of the present invention, which are illustrated. So these illustrations on the side over here on the right talk about um, essentially the, the design for, I'm not sure if this is for the craft or just the resonant cavity. I think this is just the resonant cavity, um, but they talk about in here. Okay, it looks like 100, let's see, 10 using the inertial mass. Resonant cavity wall 100, so 100. So this little error, okay, so here is the outer resonant cavity wall. And then the inner resonant cavity wall would be 200, right? The inner resonant cavity wall, 200, yep. So this colored in section is where the resonant cavity happens. And that resonant cavity, um, I believe is filled with a noble gas here. Uh, let's see, resonant cavity 150 is filled with a noble gas 155. So 155, yes. So the colored in part is the noble gas. It says the xenon gas may be used. However, in any noble gas, 155 or equivalent can be utilized. So what they're saying is that you need to use a noble gas. Now, if I'm correct, noble gases um, are highly stable gases that don't bond with other, they don't bond. Uh, let me see, noble gas. Of course, I have to do this. Oh yeah, noble gas. So I just want to make sure my, my information is correct here. 
uh, aerogens, let's see, noble gases. They're the stuff on the right of the, okay. Yeah, extremely low chemical reactivity. So they don't bond with other um, gases very well. Uh, I was hoping to find a list of them. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, and xenon. So they're saying xenon, this here. Um, so colors and spectra, so it's this blue gas. Um, I guess it's used in uh, neon lights. Yeah, anyways. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm not going to go too depth into that, but I thought it was interesting that they were using a noble gas. Anyways, it goes on and on and on about a bunch of different little technical details. Like, it's pretty, it's pretty intense. Um, you could probably build one if you had the right... Okay, here, here's the deal. I'll build one. Like, if someone gives me enough money to build one, I'll build one. Well, I don't know. I don't actually know what it would take. Uh, there's some stuff in here that's pretty hard to do. The basic idea is pretty simple. It's a resonant cavity filled with gas that you bombard with a certain frequency of, of microwave um, radiation uh, or any radio frequency, and it causes some sort of anti-gravity device to, or it reduces gravity. Oh, I was also going to point out uh, that there were tests that they uh, referred to. Yeah, so I'm going to read this entire uh, paragraph as best I can. I'm not sure how to pronounce these names. For the mathematical formalism of inertia and thus gravitational mass reduction, consider a published physical review letter uh, December 1989. By these people, report anomalous weight reduction in gyroscopic for uh, right rotations only. At the time, the authors could not elu elucidate the physics behind the anomalous results. Several null results experiments followed, and a recent one as well, which declared, and I think the recent one they're talking about is a test of the EM drive, which uh, declared uh, the Hyaska. Okay, whatever. The results null and void, or at least questionable. However, all these experiments were flawed in their ability to entirely duplicate uh, the Hyaska et al. Uh, the experimental procedure and setup, especially the high vacuum chamber and test section, was mounted inside. Closer attention to the non-zero intercept of uh, high, is it Hayasaka, Hayasaka et al. Um, expression related to the gyro's weight diminution. How I can I not say this word? Diminution. So essentially, it's reduction. They could have just said reduction, but whatever. Or with respect to its mass. So essentially what it seems to be that they're saying in here is that the EM drive, when it was tested, there was a slight amount of thrust detected and they didn't know why. They thought it was some sort of, it wasn't able to be replicated. They thought it was some sort of a glitch. Um, but what they're saying here is that it's possible, or at least this is my interpretation, is that the reason why there was a small amount of thrust detected and it couldn't be replicated is because it was actually reducing the mass of the device. And that reduction in mass causes an imbalance in how it's weighted. Because how they test this is they have this very well-balanced um, pole, essentially. And they put an equal weight and then the device on the other side. And if it's able to turn that or, or cause some sort of a force on it, it's easy to measure because it's so perfectly balanced that when there's a differential, it shows up. So what they're saying is that the mass reduction reduced the weight on that other side of the measurement causing a slight amount of force to show up. Um, so, so they're saying that thrust was misinterpreted, uh, or, or, or I should say mass reduction was misinterpreted as thrust. That's what it appears to be the claim they're making. Um, now anyways, I'm not an expert on any of this. Uh, I just want to say that because I know a lot of people probably will read this and actually understand it and they'll probably tear me a new asshole, but I just wanted to share because no one else is talking about it. This is like breakthrough technology. This could be an completely new interpretation of physics. This could change everything. You know, you could use this in commercial airlines to reduce the amount of fuel that they use by who knows what what, what percentage. Maybe, maybe eventually, if this is advanced, it could um, make it half have the mass. I mean, if you could ha reduce the mass of a plane by half. The fuel consumption would go down, the speed would go up, 
uh, with at much cheaper price. I mean, just in that one area, that would be crazy. Um, space travel, they were talking about the EM drive, how it could get to other planets because uh, it could continue to accelerate to where it gets close to the speed of light. Maybe this is something which would be uh, do the same thing. Um, I mean, it sounds a lot like um, a warp drive, to be honest, because isn't a warp drive just trying to alter the... I guess the warp drive is, is altering space-time, whereas this is altering gravity and the other three fundamental forces is what their claim was. I think that's what they said. Um, yeah, it says the electromagnet force is perfectly positioned to be able to manipulate the other three. Yeah, so in other words, if this is true, and I don't know why they would be publishing this application unless they or this application for a patent unless they had received some sort of result. Like it seems just beyond me that they would go into this amount of detail if there wasn't some sort of result that they thought was valuable enough to make a patent of it. Um, I mean, it's also possible that they've had this for years and that, that it's been, you know, um, known inside uh, the select, you know, like government research agencies for a very long time, but they kept it under wraps. And now that the EM drive is out in the public, they're like, hey, we should protect our, our technology and our ability to use it and just with a patent so that there's, you know, some legal recourse if someone patents it before us and they want to sue us because we're utilizing their technology. Now, obviously, they're the military, but maybe they just thought that would be a better idea um, to go about it. I don't really know what's going on here. Uh, it seems like it's some pretty crazy shit, but someone who actually knows all this shit needs to come through and like actually read it carefully um, and, and tell me whether or not uh, I've got this correct. But if I do have this correct, it appears to be a, a major breakthrough. Um, for all sorts of different applications. So anyways, I'm sort of ranting on and on because this is so exciting. Um, I don't know why no one else is talking about this. This is an EM drive, and it does say in here that the US government, the US government intends to use it without having to pay royalties or anything like that. So they could just be protecting their technology now that it's out to the public. Um, and they, who knows, they may have had it for a long time. Um, so anyways, I'm gonna end this this video I really am and I've been ranting about this I'm super excited I want to hear what you guys think and that's all for now